Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Cyber Book Tour. I bet my mom's one of them. <laughs> and what about the Bell by Roz Williams? Look, I'm going to hold up my copy. Yeah, and I'll hold up mine. This is my copy. Mine is 34 of 34. Mm -hmm. Mine is 33 of 34. Well, there you go. You're right. You're right ahead of me. I got the last <laughs> copy, advanced copy. I still don't have an official copy yet, and I <laughs> published it. <laughs> but that's actually. <laughs> so I, I mean, I don't have a. I don't have the final copy either. So. Well, we will. We will. I. You we, know, yes, it's we coming. will. Uh, I wanted everybody else to get it first, and actually. Well, I naturally, know, right. I don't know, but you know the first. Press the first pressing when I sold out in like three or four days. Mm. So I don't know what pressing we're on now. I have to chat with the publishers, but um, I'm thrilled that people are buying it. I know, I know it's a um, it's a purchase. You know, it's not like a flimsy paperback though. This is a proper hardback book with a with a bookmark ribbon bookmark. I mean, this is this is a when I when I got the book um, in Athens, actually, when they sent all these copies to Athens for the book reading, and I got the box, and I like cut the box open and pulled the book out, and I was like, I well, I started crying actually. I was like, this is exactly what I wanted this book to look like. Like this was a total dream come true. R Roz would have been so happy with this this is a proper book of poetry and and that's what i wanted actually and and thank you bianca and chelsea publishers for making it they they did it they did it they they invested in it and you know they reached out to me actually also so i would it was, it, they approached me to actually make this book happen which was a, also refreshing after 25 years of doing this it's kind of crazy that it came out 25 years later. It is. Which wasn't which wasn't planned. I want to add that, that wasn't, wasn't even planned, part of the plan. No. Not at all. In fact, they they reached out to me first in 2016, um, and we started talking about putting the book out, and um, I was thrilled that they wanted to do it in English, and uh, then we we you know we bounced back and forth for a couple years. Um, and then we we um, we got the um, French publishers in on it, and Sebastian Michaud, who had done the uh, interviews in the French book, we got him in on it and realized that we didn't have he didn't have the original interviews in English, only in French. So all those interviews, the whole biography that was in the first book were all in French, but not in English. They had been translated, but we didn't have the originals in English. So we were like, we can't do the same book. We just can't do the same book. We're not gonna translate it back from French into English and risk changing people's wording. So we put that aside. Um, and then that was another big hurdle, which took another year or so and then COVID happened and then everything halted of course you know that that's really where we were we were ready to go and then COVID happened and um so then we came back to it last year and we said let's make it happen and it was actually pretty quick if you recall i think we i think it was actually well i know it was actually this time last year that you and I sat down and did the interview because we were here in Skopje and we're back here in the exact same place we were a year ago when we did the interview. Um, I think it was in like what July, maybe. Yeah, year? it was. Uh, yeah, it was sometime. I think late June or early July late because June I remember. Or early yeah. Yeah, I remember. I had to. I don't remember why. I needed a quiet place to do it, and so I remember. I it was like the middle of a heat wave here in New England. So I was sitting yeah. up in my parent I was sitting in the hayloft of my parents' barn and it was like 90 degrees out and there was no I AC. Remember. And I had this tiny little fan just sitting on the table with me. And I remember being up there for like three or four hours at a time. And I was like 
God, I am so miserable right now. <laughs> I mean, well, we did it. At least we did it like over a couple sessions, you know. Like, oh um, yeah, we didn't do it all at once. So, yeah, know, uh, no, and 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 so that and that that was really born. That whole idea of doing the interview was really born out of the fact that we couldn't use the original biography that was in the French book. So mm -hmm. you know, in a way, that was it was kind of to me it was the divine intervention or kismet or something because originally I had no intention of doing that. I just wanted a book of poetry. That's all I wanted was a, a, a simple book of Ross's poetry. So I had no intention really of having the interview part that they used in the French book. I'm glad they did it, but I was not my, it had nothing to do with me. Um, so this time around, it was really interesting because I was like, you know, if we're going to have a forward, if we're going to have something to replace that, let's let i'm gonna sit down and because there's been so much stuff over the years <sighs> talked about Roz and our relationship and his death and all of those things and i was like i'm just gonna i just want to do a final kind of here's my relationship with this human being like here's my i can't talk for i can't speak for everybody else but i can talk about what my own experiences were with with Roz and so you know you came up with some great questions and and we went from there and I I'm so pleased honestly thank you Zach because I'm I'm so pleased it was like an opportunity for me to get all of that off my chest once and for all and kind of just be like okay I'm done I'm sending it out into the world and then after that sending out Roz's poetry in a book that's like a real book of poetry you know uh, so i'm 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 very pleased with everything i hope i hope you are as well oh absolutely i mean you thank me i mean i should be the one thanking you for allowing me to to have this opportunity because it, it's one of those weird um full circle kind of moments where you and i came into contact strictly right. Strictly based on the yeah. fact that I wanted an original, like the original uh, French pressing of the book, but and I had emailed you, yeah, about seven and a half uh, years ago, I Crazy. think it was, yeah, yeah, and because I had said, hey, uh, Ryan, you know, I, I know you were friends with Roz, um, yeah, this book is it in English, and you're like, yeah, no, sorry, not happening, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And then we just kind of stayed in contact, and now almost ten years later, you know, we we put it out together. Well, I it was sent one of those... you the book. I sent you my copy of. Yes, the you book. did. <laughs> yes, you did. When I was in college, yes. I sent you my copy of the book. I mean, I still have a copy of the book, but um, I had, I think, I guess, I I had a couple copies from the original pressing. So I was like, yeah, I can send you a copy. You know, why why not? Because um, it wasn't available anywhere except in France or French speaking countries which, you know, I was annoyed by that from the very beginning. Right. I was yeah. like, why? Why would you do that? It's like shooting yourself in the foot, you know? Okay, I'm glad that it was in French. I, I did that specifically because we were living in France at the time, Ryan and I, my, my husband and I were living in France and I knew Roz's love of Paris and his love of France, that he would love to have a book of his poetry published in French. So that was the origin, original impetus to do it in French. Um, but I assumed that we would have an English translation and it just never happened. And I had nothing to do with that. There was nothing I could do about it. So yeah, it was funny that you emailed me and then now seven years later, here it is and, and you're in it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's one of those, it's one of those weird things, you know, it's just like, you know, yeah, well, like it was meant to be almost, but it was meant to be, it was absolutely oh, meant yeah. to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's unfortunate that you know uh, I am in Europe, so I would, we talked about doing some book tours in the United States, and that may still happen. I don't know. Um, we may do some book tours here in Europe, um, where where we're doing readings um, in Athens. It was great. We got um, the legendary Ron Athey. Um, was happened to be there in Athens um, doing a performance workshop um, that he was doing separately. And then um, I, I reached out to him and said, hey, do you want to, the book's coming out right now. Do you want to 
do a book reading with me, kind of literally bookends of Roz and Ron meeting when they were, you know, 16. Um, Roz was 16, Ron was 18 when they met. And then me being at the other end of Roz's life when he died and we were like, okay, yeah, let's, let's do this. So I'm so thrilled that we were able to make, make that happen. And then um, my dear friend, Eric Freeman, who is obviously one of Roz's best friends, um, said, I'm coming too. So he flew over and we were able to be there. Um, and we were all able to read. My husband, Ryan, was able to read Roz's poems live. And then we got all of you um, to record. Jatan, Edward Stapleton, William Faith, Omawen, you, uh, Jennifer, Doriandra, all these people sent in these amazing readings and so it was a great event I mean it really was a great opening I, I couldn't have asked for more honestly um, but yes we we were we talked about doing some some book tours but in the meantime you said hey let's do a let's do a live stream let's uh, let's read some poems online let's yeah, our, our cyber book tour a very cool cyber book tour because I just remember uh, when uh, we were talking about the the book launch in Athens, mm -hmm. I remember I was like I was getting ready, I was packing my bags, I I but I couldn't get yeah. any time off for my day job, and yeah. I eventually was gonna say, yeah, well, fuck it, I'll just go anyway. But of course, the the travel aspect of it was the thing that really that really really killed me. So that yeah. that's the, that's the whole reason I couldn't go, and I was I was so so bummed I, I wanted to go so bad i was like oh man but at I the know. same time i mean like what uh, go to athens for what two days and then fly back to america like that it's doesn't really seem to, not, it didn't no. make a lot of sense to me no you know it's really it's not worth it it, it wasn't worth it in the, in the long run to do it just you know and and like I said, uh, Ron just happened to be there. I don't think he, he would have flown flown on uh, on his own necessarily either. And um, yeah. so it it was completely understandable. I think that you know you, you couldn't make it over. But yeah, we're we're doing it now. You know, hopefully um, some people will uh, will join us um, and hear some some of our readings. I, I we're going to read some poems. Yeah, we're gonna do some readings. We're just gonna, you know, chat for a little bit, and then we'll yeah. uh, open it up to anybody that wants questions. We started a little late. We had some uh, tech difficulties, so we'll uh, probably extend it out by a little bit. But we'll give some people some time to to join us, of course. Absolutely. I know we have. I know we have people that we're gonna be joining from all over the world, so in different corners of like America here and you know and over there cool. in Europe. So very cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Looking forward to having um, some interactions. Um, and of course, any questions that people want to ask, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer. Um, or me, if anybody has a question for me. <laughs> and that also. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Well, I did. I did just post it on Facebook, so um, for all my 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 people out there. So hopefully, um, some of them will join us and uh, ask some questions. Oh, and I'll shout out um, happy birthday to uh, my friend Iggy, Iggy from EXP. It's his birthday today. Oh, yep, I saw that. Yeah, I saw it was Iggy's happy birthday, birthday Iggy. Happy birthday, Iggy. Yeah, happy we birthday. always celebrated together. Um, we used to celebrate all the time together so my birthday is on thursday so we're four days apart right. and um well he's older he's older than me though he's a year older than me <laughs> he's an old man that's why i call old him big man. Papa. that's why i call him big papa <laughs> I, he's, I love it when you call me big papa big pop. throw your hands in the air no. that's right that's right yeah no we're not doing no our uh our rap will be on the next uh, live stream that we do. Oh yeah, the yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, that'll be It'll our, be our special Halloween live stream, right? All rap. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's crazy that it was literally last, like almost exactly last year that we were doing the uh, interview. Yeah, I mean it's. 
And you know, it's so funny to think about that because when something like that happens, when you know you have something of this magnitude, you know, you're thinking to last year, we're working on it, like, oh man, this is going to take forever to come out. We're going to have to wait. And now here we are, it's like, oh, it's already been a year. Yeah. Since we like worked on it in like two months since the book come out, basically. So, yeah. Well, I knew, I knew, you know, it's, it's funny. Books, books are like that. They, they, there's a long gestation process with a book. And right. then the very end happens like quickly, <laughs> very quickly. Um, you know, once it's a green, green light, it's go. And all projects are like this, but books, books take a lot longer than most things I found, you know, having worked on several books now. Um, they take longer and I don't know why exactly, but you, I think there's just a, um, between the time that you start and the time that you end, um, it's, it's a long process. And a lot of that is, um, maybe that's also due to me because I'm very meticulous and I'm very particular and I don't, I don't really, you know, I don't want to do things, um, anything really artistically ha haphazardly. I'm, I'm very like, a, you know, a per perfectionist, uh, you know, I wanted it to be right. I mean, I know we proofread the book, like five or six people proofread the book. I don't know how many times and we kept finding little things here and there and, you know, that we had to fix, et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I read through the book, like, and I mean the, the draft before it actually right, got laid right. out to print. I mean, the f I read my, the four that I wrote so many times, I almost can't even look at it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was like, yeah. it has to be perfect. It has to be, which, but by that's the way, what happened. And, you, yeah. yeah. And I mean, cause you have to, and not a lot of people are aware of this. Uh, you are of course, cause I told you, but yeah. Uh, when I, uh, finished the forward. Um, I remember I went through, I added, I cut, I moved it around. And when I finally finished it, it came out to 1,334 words. It's crazy. On Halloween, I should add. It was on <laughs> Halloween when I finished it, which was not planned. That wasn't planned at all. And then uh, I believe what you had said, the manuscript for the, the, um, the transcription of our interview was about 34 manuscript pages. I know that was weird too. It's just one of those things. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of creepy, but, but in a good way, you know, it's Roz stirring. Oh his, yeah, for sure. He's putting his little finger in the pot. Um, no, I, I know, uh, all of that was very much, he, he was, he was, he was there during the whole process. I felt I felt his presence during the process of the whole thing, and um, I know he would be really, really um, happy with with what the end product is. Finished the finished book. I know he'd be really, really pleased. Oh, I'm so. sure, absolutely. From everything you've told me, I'm sure he would be very, uh, very yeah. pleased with it. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. it's a beautiful book anyway. I mean, I'm not just saying that because we worked on it, but yeah, it actually is very, it's very good quality. It is, it is. It's it's beautifully done, and it's um, the quality of it is 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 impeccable. So the print, the paper, everything, everything about it. Yeah, um, but yeah, I know. Um, you know, it was it was a long process, and you know, uh, obviously. Uh, a labor of love as well you know it wasn't like one of those things that <laughs> um even the first book it, it barely sold at all you know and then i remember actually it's so funny how many people now are like oh when's this book coming out when's this book coming out is there ever going to be an english book and you know when i first in the early 2000s when i first approached i approached many 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 um publishing houses, all alternative publishing houses in the United States, and they all turned it down, every single one. Really? So no, no one was interested in it at all. So I just, just to be clear <laughs> that, um, you know, I was shocked. I thought, you know, these are publishing houses that put out lots and lots and lots of um, rock and roll memoirs, et cetera, et cetera. 
but the reality was that it wasn't a book that was um it was it was poetry and they just didn't care and poetry is one of those things that people just kind of you know um turn their nose up at and i think now finally after Roz's legacy has has grown and his reputation uh, on the internet etc finally you've got some a lot of people interested thankfully and i'm 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 really pleased that that there's a there's a wider public for it now oh absolutely I, i've always felt that and i mean i i know most people probably agree that you know Roz has never really gotten the credit that he deserves and the recognition that he deserves. No, so, no, no, not at all. You know, I know his fans all over the world, but you know, I think this was really important, at least to me, because Roz thought of himself first and foremost as a poet, and then a musician, and then an artist, and and I'm the same. I started writing poetry when I was like ten years old, and that was our pact. Basically, was if one of us goes first, we'll publish the other one's writing. You know, uh, we shared poetry with each other all the time. We were constantly writing together, doing cut ups. That's how the horse's mouth came into being, et cetera. And so writing was really essential. Roz was always writing and me too. Um, and so that was the, that was the, you know, kind of birth of this book idea was if if anything happens to either one of us the, the the survivor will publish the other one's writing and so i kept my promise <laughs> well it's very commendable of you to do that especially this many years later i mean it's that's insane um you know i don't know it, it had to be it just had to be I, the work was there and i just i i i wanted to I wanted it to be out there. I wanted people to read these poems, and they're great poems. So, you know, um, we should read some of them, actually. Yes, we should. Yeah, why don't we do that? That's. Uh... <laughs> I mean, what are we here for? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are we here for? Um, yeah, I will. I would happily um, start start with a poem I read at the. Uh, at the um, book reading in Athens, I started the book reading with, with the title piece. Um, so maybe I will start with that piece. That's okay. And what about the bells? All right. So reading from my book. And what about the bells? Like the moon, she's holding hands with age. Vanity cracked in her arms, China doll. Who can tell her the lies that she wants to hear? Who can carry on? Halfway there, she comes to steal my meaning. She comes to steal the bitter taste. Where on this floor we dream, and in these dreams we drown. The bed travels farther to set our hands free. Left on the edge, I slept a lot in Paris then again on land but now i sleep on ladders i'm so afraid to fall and what about the bells it just gets better and better every time you read that one thank you thank you absolutely and, and it's just and like you said it's just the perfect one to really not only to kick off the the launch in athens but i mean the i mean it's a titular you know piece yeah. though it, and then, and then, obviously, the the well it was also the the impetus to to do it in Athens, to do the book reading in Athens. Actually, was because of that poem, because it became the lyric to Electra Descending, so um, from Catastrophe Ballet. So, right, Electra, Electra obviously being um, the the famous um, um, Greek. Greek tragedy. Um, so I, I really thought, oh, this is a great full circle moment. Um, even though the poem is in Paris, he wrote it in Paris, but Electra descending, of course, and Jocasta and that whole thing was like, oh, this is going to be great in Athens. So I was, I was actually really happy to do it in Athens. But yeah, we started off with that one. But um, why, don't, why don't you read a piece? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I think I'll read two. 
Why don't you read too? <laughs> yeah, just like at the book launch, right? Exactly. Yeah, so th uh, this one is actually one of my favorites uh, from the book. I I kind of wish I had chosen this one, but uh, mm. William Faith did this one for the mm. I think he did a phenomenal job. I Oh, uh, yeah, I know. I can't do, right? beat it. I won't try. You I'm not a performer, to... but no, I know. Please. Oh, absolutely. This one is called Desperate Ritual. Desperate Ritual, careless words, death must be a whisper away. Understanding sickness, we chose a method of attack by seduction. Those seduced are surely placid souls, our own shadows. By definition, I could explain my loss as a loss of expression. Seven years bad luck, each time I pass the mirror, I fear the man behind, the man behind the mask. Careless ritual, desperate words, death is but a whisper away. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Great reading. Absolutely. Uh, this next one I do have to uh, make a note. Uh, this one is, of course, not only by Roz Williams, but he wrote this with Ron Athey. So I need to, you know, mm. we have to give credit where credit is due. Absolutely. Absolutely. And of course, this one is, of course, very fitting, being by uh, Roz and Ron. This one is called Premature Ejaculation. The realization of death before birth, the conscious dream, the violence of beauty, and the result of that dream. The realization that not only is performance a sequence of dreams, but that life through death is of one's mind to succeed or fail. Through this performance, we are set free, freedom being the capability to use the whole mind, the reality of subconsciousness, the most premature of all ejaculations. Tear the cage from your skull, take aim, and fire. Great, great one. I love that piece. I do, I do too. Brilliant. Take aim and fire. Um, well, I'll read a piece that's also a collaboration um, between Roz and myself. Um, this piece first appeared on the horse's mouth um, which we wrote, um, the whole lyrics to all the horse's mouth, we wrote over a series of months, year maybe, on a typewriter just doing an um, exquisite corpse style cut up. So this is the original piece. Um, it appears on the horse's mouth called Raped. The song is called Raped. Um, but the original title was Hemispheric Energy. And um, I re-released it on on my album, um, uh, um, City of Brittle Stars, um, and um, this is uh, this is my ver well, this is the original version of the original text um, before it was, you know, cut up uh, again, cut up to uh, end up on the horse's mouth. So I've put it into the book um, as it was written. It's called uh, Hemispheric Energy. <clears throat> Hemispheric energy, channeling out from a thousand different directions. The feeling cannot be held down long enough to rape. But when felt, it may burrow through your skeleton instantaneously. All at once, making you aware of the whirlpool of atoms keeping the world in motion. This world, tossed into monstrous chaotic waves, obscured by its own shadow. No light in these dimensions of phosphorus brain fear. No clear vision of hope or redemption. Eyes torn away by savage mental battles. A war carried on in endless blindness and cruelty. Weaklings cannot survive on a wave of nothing for long without some help. The rest is gesture, congested feeling, and an unwillingness to resist temptation. A man of many faces, this father of temptation, all at once guided and yet guarded. There has been no attempt to conceal the outcome. It shall be swift and ruthless, the pain sharp and full circle. The world in which we suffer now shall seem a pleasant memory. 
Recall smashed from cages of non-being where the lone lives inside a creature. Fold and regather your feathers. A ruffled plume does nothing for the soul of crying winters. Die, disengage, dissolve into the recesses from whence you spewed and wrestle the golden monkey of the dawn. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. Absolutely. So what made you want to re-record <clears throat> that for your album? Why was it that specific track? Um, well, I, I, uh, two reasons. One, I mm -hmm. really liked the original um, phrasing. I really liked the original. And Roz had, um, had cut it up and, and, um, and also he turned it into Raped. Um, he'd given a really dark um, take. His take was his take on it. And this was my take on it, which was much more celestial, much more moving out into the universe. And his was much more about the dark aspect, which was totally there. Um, but yeah, so he had his take and I had mine, which is actually kind of true of all the pieces on the horse's mouth. I mean, I would have done, you know, I could, we could have done three horses mouths. <laughs> he could have done his version. I could have done mine. Um, but yeah, you know, when you write something, you have a different uh, perspective, uh, especially when you write something together with somebody else, you know, you're reading your lines and he's reading his lines. And so he had cut it up quite a bit and put a different spin on it. And I just like, I thought, oh, I really want to, re-record it and give give my take but then i really wanted to put it into the book as it was without editing i mean you know so just so people could kind of see where it goes how the how the how po and again i think we'll see with all these poems in the book what i love is that people who love raza's music will see where he was cutting from a text here, a poem here, and splicing them together in order to make a lyric, because that's what he really was doing, was mining his poetry in order to create poem, uh, lyrics for songs, So, which I right. do as well, which I do as well. I've merged lots of poems together to create a song, and um, it works that way, and you can really see the, the, um, the kind of um, genesis of of some of those pieces from the poet poems here in the book so that was really important to me to kind of see the the raw material that that he was working with and then mining his own material so did you want to um do you want to do a little uh, mystery speaking of cut-ups oh. do you want to flip, flip through the book and just like pick a random poem i think that would oh yeah sure yeah we, we had discussed this beforehand we were we were trying to think of a couple of more pieces to fill in our set list for this evening and i said well why don't we just flip through the book and just randomly pick something i love that idea i love that idea you go first okay so <laughs> okay <laughs> all right i of course i pick one of the longest ones in the book right <laughs> all right uh this one is called heat Ooh, i love that oh, poem oh yes once in a lifetime, once every moment. He stood under doorways, he stood over there. His point of view was fever on a thread of light. My point of view was shaken, he took my mind. All clocks misunderstood him, illusions shattered slightly. My cigarette was taken slowly. The simple walk that fooled him, built language high. He kept our mouth shut, tight and peeled. Somewhere in hunger, he slept aloud. I asked of dream starvation. He gave me his mind. We will not stay forever. We will not stay forever. His dreams dream dreams for me. It's three inches between here and there. He left my body breaking backs. His heat betrays me, keeping distance between cures. He lays his head dumb on my mouth. Experiments, he's breathing, held out on land. Proof that I am dreaming, his bed and I need dreaming left in the dark we breathe these covers keep us warm the day will disappear talk just can't last forever in this room somewhere in hunger 
we slept aloud, brought out a dream starvation, he stayed behind. I will not stay forever, I will not stay forever. His dreams dream dreams of me, he's cruel and so am I. I will drift away, I will say nothing as I die, just where I want to be, with my hands missing. Now I'm left on my own and I can see forever, plan out another lifetime, remember murder. Know what it means to grow old, know how it feels to change the color of your skin. My dreams sleep out loud. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that poem. Thank you for reading it. Love that poem. His dreams, his dream, dreams, dreams. I love that image. It's so brilliant. Brilliant. Now, you, yeah, you had said that you wanted to, uh, you were going to read uh, that piece at the, uh, at the book launch, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I thought about it. I, you know, there were so many mm. choices. I was hope so right. hard choose what I wanted to read. I wanted to give everybody, you know, I picked the poems that I knew I wanted to read for sure, but then I really wanted right. to let everybody else have a, a big range to choose from. So I, I left that one out there and nobody chose it. And then I'd already kind of chosen what I was going to do. So I said, okay, that's, that's enough. But I'm so glad that you read it. It's a great, great piece. Um, um, and it's heavy piece too. It's a very mm -hmm. emotional and sensual and, um, you know, romantic also piece. But um, I, I thought I would read a short piece that is very much um, shows Roz's humorous side. It is one line. I also read this at the book launch, but it's worth repeating. And this, this is totally Roz's humor. So the poem is called Beyond Eternal Edge of the Fish Gutters. Most times I feel like a goat amongst hogs. Very deep and brooding, absolutely. <laughs> I, I love it. I, like you said, well, what does it mean? <laughs> Don't try to say, <laughs> don't mean anything. Don't 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 dig too deep. Just let it seep in. Yeah. Most times I feel like a goat amongst hogs. So no, we, that, we all feel that way sometimes. That's that was a very that's a very Roz poem. Um, but on a, a more serious um, note, I'll read um, a um, a poem that, that Roz wrote for me. <clears throat> so this poem is called uh, Velvet Touch, Orion. In the shadow of sorrows, open thine eyes to me. I'm not begging, merely asking. Dear brother, hello, it's me. I feel that we've been blinded. I feel that we've been sleeping. Dear brother, I lay weeping torn from your velvet touch. In the shadow of sorrows, I cast a line to thee. Strong arm, can you take it? Take it to the place that we should be. Hello, it's me. Hello, it's me. In the shadow of sorrows, I shall greet thee. But at the gate, I fear that I've misplaced the key. Still hoping someday to be free, I ask in passing, oh, I'm merely asking, when can we share a velvet touch? At the passing of shadows, our love will flower, grown up around us, between us, believe me, as rough as hearts that bleed in the shadows we are born, alone. Embrace this weathered tone. Dear brother, don't you know that it's just me? Open thine eyes and share a lasting touch. In the shadow of sorrows, I cast a line to thee. Strong arm, can you take it? Take it to the place that we should be? Hello, it's me. Hello, it's me. That one get, always gets to me a little bit. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for me to read. Oh, understandably so. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's another one of the book that's just, I mean, you have, I mean, they're all good in their own way, but that, that one I think is definitely top tier. 
that's definitely one of the best ones in the whole book. It's hard for me to read, um, mm -hmm. mainly because um, he never read it to me. Real? He never read that to you, really? No, I saw it after he died. Really? So, yeah. So when I was going through the poems after he died, I came upon it, and it said "Velvet Touch" for Ryan. And yeah, that was a uh, hard to read. Hard to read. It's still hard to read, right? Um, you know, because we we had a, a a deep relationship, and um, it, it was a not a sexual relationship uh, that I think Roz wanted. <laughs> uh, uh, I think he wanted more than a platonic relationship. Um, but yeah, I was with Eric and uh, we had a deep love. So it was very much like uh, it, it could have gone that way uh, if circumstances had been different, I think. And I, yeah, but the love was there. And so yeah, it's hard, it's hard to read. Even now it's still hard to read, um, but it was very hard to read, of course, when I f finally stumbled across it, <clears throat> you know, after he was gone, so. I love the poem. It's and again, it's a lyric, lyrical. You know, has that lyric quality to it. So, um, uh, why don't you read another piece? Yeah, sp yeah. Speaking of lyrics, actually, um, one of the things I love about the pieces in this book is if if you're well versed in his uh, catalog uh, with like, yeah. Christian Death or Shadow Project or his solo material. And you go through these poems, you'll find little lines like, oh, that's a line from uh, Catastrophe Ballet. This is a line from Ashes. Exactly. You exactly. Know? And uh, the piece that I'm about to read actually has lines. I uh, I think it was a uh, Luxury of Tears uh, from the oh, end yeah. Of the record. Yeah. Okay. Which is one of my favorite Christian death songs too. So, which is why I had to I had to read this one. So. <laughs> please, please do, please do. <laughs> no, absolutely. So this one is called Life in Winter. Mm. A man was sitting there in a wooden chair at a plain wooden table with his back to the door. He was wearing a derby. Changing his shape, he raised his eyes, eyes masked by green. Looking like the bloody host itself, he sat up in bed. The image was as compelling and as childish as a pie in the face. His pulse was racing, his ears throbbing. He threw out his darkness as all the choir boys moaned and fell over. Pants were dust covered and stained. Earlier in the evening, she'd stood before the mirror, learned how tenuous is the life of the soul, now mute, spent, re entering her sanctuary. The silence and the darkness stole back up the cellar stairs and waited, held hands and snake danced in a chain, clinging to each other's costumes, painted peach or pink or chartreuse. Then I was awake, trying to fall asleep again. My head and shoulders loomed overhead. Fire that hovered over every disciple in that other upper room burned my fingers, spinning devils of snow. They can't even see me. The haven of sick minds lusted after the blood of men, melting and disfiguring the image, tugging them down by the wings into a bed of violets. Plantation houses, costumes, Dresses rose from my ribs, hands were tied, stare at his raw hands. Eyes cuffed his hands behind his back. The ballerina tried to bite his hand. Exotic punishment. It happens in half sleep, his rejection by the mother he conjures up. He rejects the surrender of his will. You walk like you're a hundred years old, and I suppose that means that I should go with you. Just the two of us left, dearie, he said aloud. Follow me to the trophy room. Look there, I whispered. Figures are focusing on you, looking at you. The ice becomes disfigured, rough. It's always cold when you sleep in the snow. Monks and professors, pedants and rogues, lovers of gold, misers and cut purses, virile women and effeminate men. They spent their time writing footnotes and engaging in controversy. And often, an ordinary spanking with a leather belt would do them just fine. 
The hero is the cowpoke Christ who rides into town, lonely and obscured. Their guide and guard. Flagrant acts of brutality. Sense of the unknown tongue and the terrors and the dangers that he, from the days of a lifetime, made the handkerchief red. Someone was going to kill him and raise a chuckle. I couldn't remember God when he was drunk like that. An artist should never apologize. Never explain. Bravo. That and last course, line is, is just... And okay. of course, then the, the line, uh, I can't remember God when I'm yeah. drunk all day. Drunk all day, yeah. So, yeah, there's all, there's all these little... Yeah, and I, that's what I, I knew. You know, like, like you said, uh, people who, who, who are familiar with Roz's work are, are the book is just a, a minefield where they'll see, oh, wow, oh, this is where the, this yeah. is where that line <laughs> from. And he stole it from this poem. And yeah, so, um, well, I'll do a little mystery reading too. How about that? Oh, exciting. Yeah. I'll, I'll spin, I'll spin the wheel. Oh, uh, I'm looking forward to this I, very much. <laughs> all right. What have we got? Uh, oh, oh, this is a great one. Oh my God, I oh, love this good. poem. Uh, Buckle actually, in, everyone. This poem, um, um, the other Ryan, my husband, read at the reading in Athens. So I'm thrilled to read this poem because it's one of my favorite poems. Um, it's called He Traveler. <clears throat> he Traveler. We are travelers, destination, desecration and silk stockings. We move light and flight. Christopher, he traveler, button my fly and pack my bags, built a hotel and called it freedom. Camouflage is a mere instinct. Christopher, he traveler, button my fly and pack my bags. We stopped to rest in the desert and drank from amber pottery. He built a hotel called Freedom. In each room was a white cot, a bowl of fresh wine to wash our hands in, a military helmet and a gun. The air is getting thin. We travelers, destination. We move, light and flight. Christopher, he traveler, button my fly and pack my bags. Built a hotel called Freedom. Christopher, he soldier. I love this piece. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. I love all of them. I know. Yeah. yeah so I'm glad I stumbled on that one. Um, oh, absolutely. Um, you want to read another one? Yeah, sure. I think I'll do another one. All right. All right. Uh, this is one. Uh, this is another personal favorite of mine from the book. Um, actually, uh, Edward Stapleton of Nervous Gender wow. did a, what basically was a music video. Amazing. Of this, yeah. Amazing. I mean, I mean thank you, Edward. Yes, thank you, Edward. He just he really just elevated it to like a whole like new level, and it was the first uh, video reading that uh, that was yeah. screened at the launch, and it was just the perfect way to you know kick it off because it, it just, had to start it had to start with that as soon as edward sent it to me i was like oh this is the show yeah <laughs> this is the opening of the video yeah. clip music kicks in it just hits you right in the chest and i was like Amazing. oh jeez yeah so i will uh i'll give it a shot myself please do i will uh this is called there is no sound or meaning there is no sound or meaning the world is dead a ghost of nightmarish reality prepares for the violent new orbits that spin in the shadows of one human eye. Unused limbs, the sight of things missing. I would like to shake off the maddening limitations of time and space and sanity so that all the rules of matter and perspective may unhinge and perish. I might even choose to walk the hellish tracks of the living dead. Perhaps they alone have conquered the secret I search for. A dying man aware of his approaching death is, perhaps, the only man truly living, which is why I surround myself with the symbols of death. Oof. Great and true. 
he did surround himself with a symbol of death. Yeah, amen. <laughs> our, our house was full of coffins, deer heads, you know, um, mannequins, headstones, you know, yeah. dead animals, and yeah. So, um, electric chairs and all that other stuff. Yeah, the electric chair was, yeah, yeah. It, it was a, it was an interesting apartment, let's say, or apartments. We lived in several, but yes, the, uh, there was an, there was an air of death around it all. Um, <laughs> Roz was definitely obsessed with death and dying and living and, uh, the other side. We talked about that a lot. So that's a great piece for that. Um, yeah, um, I would I would maybe finish with uh, the last poem of the book if uh, if you don't mind. Um, I put this poem on that note as the last poem of the book because I really I thought that it kind of um, sums up um, Roz's journey, as it were. Um, it's also the last um, chapter title. Um, I, I broke the book, book up into three chapters, and um, so this is the um, the last chapter is called Ether of Night, and this is the last poem in the book, Ether of Night. It seems as if I've been on this road for years, my guide nearly six feet deep. And life goes on in present day disorder, delirium, in chronic lunacy. A man's body is tortured and a theme of death emerges, innate and predestined, disguised as a choice. This image, neither human nor inhuman, shaped like wax in a mold of what is not, is that of someone I cannot identify because he is so close to me. I am motionless in this sequence a silent witness to old dreams and dying hope. Sweet dreams will soon be mine, whispering my forgotten name in violet evening skies, no longer earthbound, but withdrawing, taking it all away, like breath across a lighted candle. And I ask myself, what holds me back? Eyes blazing with fierce, savage innocence. In other words, bloodlust. A pantomime of abject fear. And I think this only happens in dreams. There must be no outcry that might betray me. And I think, when I think of myself, that my thought seeks the ether of night, eternal shadows, far from this numb body and the price of its unfolding. And I think all I want is out of here. I got a little choked up during that one. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, again, Roz, one of the reasons that Roz has an appeal to a lot of people all over the world is that he didn't lie about anything. He poured out truth. He poured out his heart. He poured out his feelings. He poured out his thoughts in a very genuine, direct, poetic way. He, he shared his innermost feelings and fears and thoughts in a poetic way that I think that's what resonates with so many people actually still is the 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 honesty and genuine aspect of his work and that piece to me is the end of the book because he's saying all I want is out of here that's what he wanted out. Mm. He didn't want to be here anymore. And, you know, I, I, although I miss him so much, and of course I talk about that in the interview that we did at the beginning of the book, I talk about our life together and, and I talk about his suicide. And although I miss him, and I know a lot of people who 
loved him, miss him, there was a part of me that also understood that he was free after he was free. He, he, he didn't, he wasn't suffering anymore. He was always suffering. He was suffering. It was a, it was hard for him to be on this planet. It was hard for him to be in this world. He, he, he didn't function in this world very well. And so, you know, I know a lot of people have said, well, why, why did he do it? What a, he was always trying to kill himself. He all, he all he wanted was out of here. Hey, did you read anything he wrote? Did you listen yeah. to what he was saying? Right. And I and I think that this you know maybe reading some of these poems will give some people some perspective on that. That this that you know these are poems that go back from the time he was sixteen until the time he died. So or or even earlier. So these really are. This really is his testament. Um, about his experience and his inner thoughts and you know um so yeah thank you for for letting me read that and thank you for your readings oh thank you well thank you for uh having me on here even yeah. though i'm hosting the live stream but... <laughs> <laughs> well i've never been live streaming before so yeah yeah neither have i this is the this is the first time for both of us so i'm a luddite what can i say um <laughs> Should do we do uh, maybe some people have questions? I don't know if anybody's out there even. I can't. Yeah, uh, I know I have a couple that uh, I got DM'd a couple of questions from some uh, some viewers. So okay, please. I, I'm yeah happy to answer them, or unless they're unless you want to answer them. <laughs> No, they're, uh, they're questions I can't answer because they're, oh, they're specifically okay. for you. So I might not be able to and, answer And I'm perfectly them. fine with that. You know, I, I'm just kind of here for the ride. So I might not be able to answer them either, but I'll try. Well, you never know. Yeah. Um, we did get one question. Okay. Uh, Henry wanted to know, what was Roz's uh, work process for when he was working on his industrial noise uh, projects, okay. like for 1334 or for Helter? Specifically, certain, the, yeah. specifically the noise stuff. Yeah, Helter in 1334 is what he referred to, so. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think I would include PE, premature ejaculation, in that as well. Oh, absolutely. Similar process for him. Um, uh, funny, funny enough, so Roz had this little box he, that he worked with. It was a little um, machine. You could put sounds in and manipulate them. It was a little... Um, amplifier was really old and it had a glitch in it so he would put you could record something uh take a sample for example and a lot of the samples uh, later on at least when we were working together on helter i mean i didn't i'm on a helter album i didn't work on any of those albums but i had a lot of um i had a huge record collection and a lot of it was like exotica and weird stuff that Roz um, loved. So he would take from my record collection and he would take little snippets, um, sample them, plug them into the machine, and then you could manipulate that sound, however, and put it on a loop. However, it would had a glitch. So it would like suddenly like start looping its own sound that you didn't program. And so it, we said there was a ghost in the machine. Um, and he loved that thing. And so he, a lot of the stuff from Helter, 1334, uh, PE, the last few PE albums, um, were, were him using that little box um, and um, sampling those sounds. So he would kind of, and then he would layer them. So he would loop one and then layer something on top of that, loop another, layer it, loop another, and then start you know, building a, a drum track, basically like a beat that was in there sometimes, not always. But um, it was a it was a constant process of layering. And a lot of them, too, would come from um, TV shows like he would tape. He was constantly taping from the television and then he would take little snippets of, you know, something that he thought was hilarious or crazy from a television show and he would get some snatch somebody's voice and then make it almost unrecognizable and turn it into sound so that you 
someone was some of those things are actually people talking, but they don't come. You would never know they were talking. Hmm. So he he was he was constantly trying to bend sound and bend what he heard and turn it into something um, else. So is it like him kind of recording what he heard, the noises around him? Um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of them came from uh, albums, actually, almost like you know, like a, a rap or hip hop artist would would take a, a sample, but he would distort it so much that you couldn't quite grasp what it was. So um, that was that was, um, and he that was actually his like um, therapeutic music. He loved mm. all the noise music. I loved all his noise music. I think I first told him that that was some of my favorite stuff that he'd ever done. It was like premature ejaculation. He was like, nobody ever tells me that. Um, and of course, Chuck Collison, I, you know, um, has a, a lot to do with all of that. Not, it wasn't just Roz. Um, um, but uh, yeah, he, he, he was some of his favorite because he didn't, he didn't have to vocal put a vocal on it and he didn't have to like be the presenter he could just create something that was i think he he listened to that more than any of his actual music that he made that was um with vocals he would sit and listen to pe quite frequently like his own um, and helter he would sit and put that on whereas he would never put on catastrophe the ballet for example so I don't know if that answers that question, but yeah, that was sort of his process um, of of creating those works. Uh, was very much uh, about sampling what he heard outside and trying to, you know, uh, put it through his lens and then put it back out again. So um, that's my answer, Henry. Well, I'd like to uh, bounce off of that and ask you a question. Uh, do you have a favorite premature ejaculation record? Um, yes, I, well, I don't know. That's really tough. I have one that I think is probably what I was first introduced to. I had all those cassettes. Eric, mm -hmm. my first uh, boyfriend had all of those PE cassettes that he got from happiest place on earth. And, um, the one that I would actually was like my driving was like my driving music. I would drive around LA and I would put in assertive discipline. Um, that was like my uh, my go to um, premature ejaculation album when I was driving on the street. On the, because I'd be on the freeway, and you know the freeway is in LA, and you're in traffic, and people are cutting you off, and it's crazy. And it was like <laughs> banging and like industrial, yeah. and so yeah, assertive discipline, one of my favorite um, P uh, tracks. Um, but you know, I love them all. I love all of them. Yeah, like those 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 albums were so good to me. Great car music for me, like great car music. I know most people would not want that in their car, but I I loved PE in the car. So <laughs> I've kept it in my car before. Do you? Do you have a favorite? Uh, well, my Necessary Discomforts is also a great album. I was gonna say mine's Necessary Discomforts. Mm. Fantastic. That's, At least that's, right now it is. Right yeah, that's a, is. that's a great album. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I mean, the last the last one is great too. I mean, um, oh yeah, yeah for sure. So. Yeah, I mean, I I work the night shift, so and in my place of work, I mean, working the night shift, I'm legitimately the only one in the whole building, and so I'll have my uh, my earbuds in, and I'll be walking around. It'll be like. 10 o'clock at night dead of winter <laughs> and i'll be listening to necessary discomforts and that's when you're stupid. in that setting that's listening stupid. to it yeah i know it's great <laughs> <laughs> and it's just yeah. like it's completely it's such a mind fuck I yeah mean. well it's a mind fuck affair um that's why you're <laughs> that's why you're a horror lover because that's a horror scene waiting to happen i mean <laughs> Late, <laughs> late night with necessary discomforts, working, nobody's in the building. Yeah, and I'm like doing a little dance and I'm like off happy, yeah. you know. Like, hey, what are you listening to? Oh, you know, here, yeah, give this a listen. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but, um, 
Yeah, so the second question that we got in the inbox was, I mean, this is one you're definitely going to have to expound on a little bit. It was very straightforward. Uh, what was your favorite memory of Roz? And I know you and I have talked about this before. Mm. I know there isn't just one, but. Um, you know, it's funny because that, um, that actually came up recently in an interview that I did in, for um, a magazine in Germany um, and said, what, what's your favorite memory of Roz? And I could only actually say that my favorite memory of Roz isn't one, yes, but it's, uh, it's his laugh, his laugh, his, his laughter, his, um, his sense of humor, uh, I think is what's so funny to me that, you know, Roz for as serious and as dark and as brooding uh, as he was, he was also one of the funniest people I've ever known in my entire life. He could make me laugh we laughed all the time we were always laughing he was silly he was goofy he was funny he would it wasn't telling jokes he was just a humorous person and he loved to laugh and he liked like making voices and squeaking and he would run down the street doing a little crab walk I actually that's one of my favorite that's actually one of my favorite moments of Roz is him running down the street and he would just do this little crab walk and he you know he was tiny he was like five foot five but he would put his little legs out <laughs> running down the street like a crab with his big mane of hair <laughs> shaking his head and people would be looking at him he would run down Hollywood Boulevard doing that like he, he just had this, he wasn't afraid to be funny or outrageous anywhere, which was also, I think one of my favorite things about him is that he was um, fearless, mm. completely fearless to, in a way. He was very, very shy in another way, which was funny because he was really shy. Um, but then he had this other side of him that was just so outlandish and, you know, um yeah it, it's definitely his sense of humor um and and certainly like sitting up at three o'clock in the morning making chicken clucking like chickens which we talked about in the book um he and i would sit up just <laughs> you know so he was just funny he was very funny i miss his laughter i miss his sense of humor um i miss absolutely miss laughing with him we were laughing all the time so that that part you know we had lots of serious conversations but uh it's the it's the laughter and the 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 humor that i miss most i would say so hopefully that answers that question oh, I I'm guess. Sure. Yeah. well you know what why don't we open it up to our live chat here and see if anybody's got some questions uh, oh, here's one. I'm assuming this one's for you. I mean, I, I can, you know, give my point of view on it too. But uh, what are your thoughts on the other books that have emerged about Roz? Um, I haven't read. Them. <laughs> Maybe you should answer. That. No comment. I, I don't. I haven't really paid any. I mean, I know. I the. I know the the Nico. Nico's book, the art book, hmm. which first came out, uh, which is fantastic. And then I know there's been a re-release of that, which is amazing to get all of that artwork in one place. Uh, amazing. I, I can't recommend that enough only because his artwork was so beautiful. And uh, it's great to have those images um, so that people can see some of those works because they're kind of dispersed all over the place. So um, that I, I know people people have bought, and I know that per book. I know that um, the, the re-release um, doesn't fall apart this time, I guess, like the first one did. So um, that's really the only one that I know. I haven't really, um, I haven't really, um, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with other books out there. Are you, do you? I, I mean, I've, I've read a few here and there, I think. I I usually try to well it depends on what I could get my hands on mm -hmm. um and I think for me 
you know, obviously aside from, you know, the art of Ross Williams, um, right. it's also a matter of when a book about him comes out, because it's not like there are a lot, but I think it's especially a matter of, is this one going to be different than the last one? Mm. Because there's only, depending on who you talk to, you know, or like who works right. on it, there's only so much information you can gather. Right. I think my favorite book that's come out is this really wonderful new book called And What About the Bells? <laughs> that, <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, this was, it was the first, uh, the original French edition was the I think the first Ross book that I'd read. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and I'm proud of that book too. I certainly am. You know, I loved I loved that that the book came out. Um, but yeah, I haven't. You know, it's hard because um, I will say that I don't. You know, I'm not reading about Roz that much. I have him here and here, so I don't I don't seek him out um, elsewhere. I you know I guess I I probably should, but I. I don't need to. So, you know, for me, it's um, as long as people are, are, are praising him and talking about him in, in, a, in a positive light, read it all, you know, take what it take whatever you can, you know, like even this book, I, you know, like we talked about the introduction is the interview and it's me talking about my life with Roz. But that's just my perspective. That's just my life with Roz. I, you know, other people knew him in a different way. And so right. I think all of it is relevant. I think everybody's perspective is relevant. People who, who knew him and loved him. And I know those are a lot of people. So um, to me, that's it's all relevant. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, I know there's a, I know there's probably quite a few out there. I've only read a handful myself, but I know the book that came out. Um, I know uh, Nico and, and Cult Epics uh, within the past year did the uh, the re-release for Only Theater of Pain for the anniversary. Mm -hmm. The book that came with that was really good. It had some oh, some cool. interviews and such, and I, it was really insightful. I, I liked it. I haven't seen it, but I'm I, yeah. I know a lot of people have, have bought it and and really loved the re-release. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a, that was a good one. So who's to say there won't be uh, more Rose books coming in the future, whatever they may uh, they may contain? Who knows? Well, you know, I mean, all, all I'll say about this is that th this is his writing and not anybody else's except me introducing it and you doing the forward, but the rest of it, it's all from him. So it's Roz in his own words. So. And uh, if I understand correctly from what you had mentioned before, <laughs> uh, there are actually a lot of other poems that weren't even included in this book. Yeah, I mean that's the editing process. Yeah, would you would we ever see a uh, another Roz uh, poetry book in the um, future? You know, I I I don't know. Probably, you know, it's kind of up to, up to the publishers. I personally feel like that would not be something that I would do. Um, and the reason is that I respect Roz as an artist in the same way that I would want him to read my work if I weren't here and go, yeah, that's not, that he didn't intend that, that to be published. It was a, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a half piece. It wasn't a completed piece. So I chose to put in the pieces that to me were complete works that were ready to publish. There were lots of things and but a lot of them were incomplete and a lot of them weren't um, things that Roz would have wanted published. So, I mean, that's just because I know him and I know that he wouldn't have been, he, he wouldn't have wanted that. So, you know, that's a decision based on, I guess, integrity and um, editing, you know, like, I would have wanted him to do the same thing for me. I would have wanted him to go, yeah, that piece is not really worthy. And it's not because they're bad. It's not, it's nothing to do with that. It's just that they weren't like, it wasn't a book. It wasn't a book of poetry. So yeah, that could be the, you know, here's everything. But, you know, I sometimes really dislike when people do that. Like, you, you know, not everything that an artist makes 
do they want you to read or hear? Some of it's demo. Some of it's stuff that we create that we're it's we don't want out there. It's stuff that right. we created for ourselves. And so I think that's a matter of um, taste, and I think it's also a matter of um, discernment. And yeah, I put out what I felt Roz would have wanted out. Um, is there other? Are there other? pieces yes there are um i can certainly put those out in a different form i would say i wouldn't call it here's a book of poetry these would be you know excerpts or something like that so i haven't really considered that um mostly just because editing all of that stuff took a long time <laughs> and a lot <laughs> work yeah i'm sure I have, i'm i'm working on my own book of poetry right now <laughs> So oh, not, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Absolutely. I'm, uh, my book of 38 years worth of poetry. So maybe down the road, but certainly not right now. That's that's the answer to that. We'll wait a few more months for this to be on the shelves and then we'll, we'll talk you. about that. Yeah. Thank you. Well, then we'll talk. Yeah. Then we'll talk. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, anybody else got any questions for us? Let's see. Okay. All right. This looks like a question. Uh, someone says, love coming across lines that live in songs from the poems, evidence of mining oneself continuously and the ethereal return. Uh, did he express sense of culmination? A sense of culmination? Um, yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I think that by mining those things, when he came up with a great lyric, for example, he was really happy with himself. He was absolutely happy with himself. Like he, when he pieced something together, he was like, oh, you got to hear this. You got to hear this. You know, I, he wanted to share. Um, and funny enough, you know, I wasn't reading through his writing then, so I didn't know what he was mining. You know, I knew later when I read them, but then he he was stealing from himself, which was funny, you know. And he was also, a lot of those things like you've seen in the poems are in quotes because he was cutting up other people's things too. So, um, yeah, I think there was a sense of um, culmination in the sense that he, he was really pleased when he came across, you know, when he finished a song that he was really proud of, he absolutely would share it and go, this is good. <laughs> he knew, he knew, he was proud of himself when he created something good, for sure, for sure. He he didn't, um, you know, he, he was sometimes um, shy about sharing it, but he, he would share when he knew something was good. He was absolutely, there was a sense of like, oh, completion. I've come up with something really good. Even if it was mining his own material or whatever, he he knew when it when it clicked when it came together. So hopefully that answers that question. I'm not sure. No, I'm sure. I know we have a lag, so we'll we'll give it a, a second for you know anyone else that wants to. Uh, is there anything else you want to add while we're uh, on the topic? Um. No. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to add? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, uh... no. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, really the the work is going to speak for itself, and I hope that people are gonna be able to read it and um, and get a sense again of this is this is the culmination. Uh, that's why I wanted to put it out in the first place was that I really wanted to have people have access to the entirety of seeing, oh, here, here's the work, you know, and, and again, you know, when, it, when, when people were talking about, um, when you were talking about, um, pieces that didn't make it into the book, a lot of them were also snippets and things like that, you know, right. so they were fragments that were found in larger poems and it was like oh obviously he was trying to work something out so then i was like this is not a poem this is just something he was trying to work out you know and i'm i was also going through journals and you know this is handwritten and obviously i i, I 
took very clearly the typewritten things that were titled and named and dated as being significant to him. You know, that was an endorsement saying, it's worthy of me to put a name on this. Right. Um, whereas sometimes something jotted down in a, in a journal was not was much more personal and i don't know like hand, like my for myself as well i write in journals by hand and i write thoughts and journal entries and then i write a poem so there was definitely a, a distinction there okay uh big e wants to know what did the early drafts of poems look like from Roz versus the finished ones Mm, which is what I was just um, kind of talking about. Yeah, that'd about. be perfect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, I didn't um, change wording, for example. I didn't uh, alter the language unless there was a spelling error and then I corrected it. Um, and then as much as possible, um, when when there was a poem there that was clearly defined where he had typewritten it, typed it out, or a handwritten it with line spacing, et cetera, I left it exactly the way it was. I didn't mess with that. Then there were poems that were written out where he just clearly written something out, very, you know, handwritten it out. There was no spacing, nothing. And in those cases, I went through and tried to put in line breaks where I felt it would enhance the reading of it visually. But for the most part, I, I really tried to, it was like, a, I tried to keep a hands-off approach to it. And just um, for me, it was about editing, misspelling, et cetera, where, where I knew it was a misspelled word, not something that I knew he was, you know, oh, did he choose to write that? Because he often would write uh, in words that weren't English words. So those I left alone, obviously. Um, you know, and then there's poems that were all in caps, for example. I left those um, the way they were, Asherah. Um, so, yeah, I tried to really just keep the keep it as pure as possible but then knowing Roz um came into came into play the main thing that i actually did in terms of editing was arranging the poems so taking that huge body of work and trying to place them in 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 a sequence and then i did kind of come up with a chapter one, chapter two, chapter three sequence where I felt like these poems really fit here, these poems really fit here, and these poems really fit here. So that was really the only input as an editor that I had. Otherwise, you're reading what or Oz wrote. You're not reading, you know, I didn't alter them. So um, hopefully that also answers that question. All right. Oh, here's one. Uh, any sketches of events, performances, or exhibitions he wanted to mount? Um, I, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure what, what that means. Could you read it again? Yeah. Uh, any sketches of events, performances, or exhibitions he wanted to mount? Ah, uh, okay. Um. Well, you know, I, that's true. Yeah, he he was very interested in doing some theatrical performances. Um, we had talked about doing, even together, doing some um, some plays. Um, he loved acting. Um, I know he and Ron Athey had talked about doing The Maids together, and then he and I also talked about doing The Maids by Jean Genet together um, as a play. Um, so he was definitely interested in theater um and acting um but i think he also was really uh, thrilled by the idea of doing like an art exposition which he didn't really get to do and um i would love to see an art exhibition of all his work in the same place you know um it's great in the book but it would be great to have an actual um exhibition but um no i know i don't i don't i can't think of anything that he didn't do that he he was constantly 
putting out what he wanted all the time. So I don't think he had anything. Um, well, I don't know. He might have had a lot of I, uh, concepts and things that he wanted to do in the future, but um, for the most part, I think he really um, he did everything he set out to do. He was an active person, creatively, very creative for a man right. who died before he put out a lot of work. Okay. Uh, Big E asks, how did Roz interact with the work of other artists, uh, such as those who influenced him, like Jean Genet or Artaud? Mm. Um, yeah, that was something that we, we talked about all the time. It was very, uh, we were very influenced, both he and I, by Genet, Artaud, um, actually, that's how we became friends, was talking about Genet and Artaud. Um, and I think he incorporated them in the sense that, um, especially with somebody like Artaud, where it was um, the, the breaking down the wall, being free, and saying exactly what you want to say, and not, um, you know, um, the theater of cruelty, the, uh, the idea of... Um, breaking down that wall between you and the audience and really going at them. And then in, in the case of Genet, I think it would be about um, Ross talking about sexuality, sensuality, um, his um, and playing with gender and androgyny and, uh, you know, language also, because Genet was so such a beautiful poet uh, and playwright and poet and uh, author, he was very much interested in the poetry of Genet and then bringing in a sexual, sensual element. So I think they very, both of those authors very much influenced his writing style and also his uh, behavior. So um, yeah, I think he absolutely incorporated, and, and, and that's true for Bowie, and uh, T-Rex, you know, Mark Bolan, all those rock stars also influenced him. But in terms of the writing, for sure, um, the poetry of Genet and the um, kind of madness of uh, Artaud and the uh, willing to break down walls of Artaud um, certainly influenced him and me as well. So we talked about that a lot. So it's definitely in the work. You can definitely feel the influence in the work. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, speaking of Artaud, it's so funny that that gets brought up. I'd like to read a quote, if I may, from the book. Please do. And this, too. this is a quote from Artaud that opens uh, the book. I chose to there, put that as a quote. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There is in every madman a misunderstood genius whose idea, shining in his head, frightened people, and for whom delirium was the only solution to the strangulation that life had prepared for him. I felt like that was a fitting beginning to the book. It was, I mean, I think it's perfect. I don't think there's any other quote that could have really, you know, really set the stage for, you know, what you're about to get yourself into. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's do one more question. Are there lesser known artists who influenced Roz instead of the commonly thrown around names? Hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's funny because obviously he's very influent, like I just mentioned Bowie and T-Rex and things like that, but um, he was also very influenced by the people around him from the time, you know, I mean, we talked about Edward Stapleton from, from Nervous Gender, and obviously um, Darby Crash from, from The Germs, people of his time that were influencing him you know, at that moment when he's starting to make music. But um, yeah, I another person that we talked about in the book um, that doesn't get thrown around that much is uh, Théophile Gautier. Oh yeah, who, of course. Who wrote, um, you know, was a part of the Club des Achichins in Paris and um, wrote Dacas Carrata, <laughs> um, the story of Dacas Carrata. And so, yeah, if I don't know if people know that, but that was a, um, a short story written in the 1860s, 70s, 
in Paris um, by Théophile Gautier, and it was a story of a, of a, a, a mandrake, a man with his feet were made out of mandrake root, and every time he walked, he had to, the, the roots dug into the ground, he had to pull them out, and uh, so, you know, Roz had read that in a book somewhere in the six, it was published in the 60s out of San Francisco, the, the, the short story was included. And that totally influenced him. And so he created um, Dr. Scarata, the name, out of that. You know, he was a very literary person. He was always reading. And so I think that what people maybe don't know is that he was constantly reading and um, all those ideas and things were going into his uh, work and his imagination. Um, but certainly musically, um, he was into a lot of noise music, um, you know, lust mord and all kinds of noise music he was listening to all the time. But he listened to everything. You know, he, he was a classical music, loved classical music. So, you know, our house was constantly filled with music from all walks of life. And um, um, yeah, I, I think that people get the obvious references, like you said, are Bowie and things like that. But um, Roz loved all avant-garde, he loved jazz, he loved classical, you know, exotica, all of it. So there was no, he liked pop music too, you know? So I think that's funny because people have an idea of him as maybe being in his genre, but he wasn't, he was a, he was consuming everything all the time. Right. Which, which a lot of artists are, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I know I could speak for myself that I just, you know, the work that I create doesn't necessarily reflect what I'm consuming if that makes sense. And I think Roz was definitely uh, that way as well. He's, uh, he was consuming a lot of information from a lot of different places. Um, and then it went through the, the little box and came out the other end <laughs> in his <laughs> mind, <laughs> you know, so. All right. Big E actually says, I think we learn a lot about Roz through the way that you, Ryan, discuss art on your podcast. Much love and support on the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Yeah, oh, yeah. make sure to go subscribe to the Epicurean Vagabonds on some Yeah, thank you. Please do subscribe to uh, our podcast is uh, Aesthetic Arrest. And that's exactly, thank you, Big E, because that's exactly um, what, what we're trying to do is kind of the same impetus, which is to take it all in. You know, it doesn't matter where these things come from if they affect you if it's if it uh, moves you um if it um if it brings you into the 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 life force that's that's the thing that's inspiring and so it really isn't about genre or taste or any of that that's irrelevant you know like what you like but really it's about like does this thing give you aesthetic arrest and that's the part that i think roz was he and i and eric too were always just looking for yeah does this thing give me chills does it raise the hair on my arms does it does it stop me in place and make me go oh whoa what is that and that can be music like we do on the podcast it can be reading something you read something you listened to something art related something you watched something you ate something you drank whatever if it, if it raises you to that level um that's the thing that's inspiring so Roz was always doing that and um thank you um yeah do check out our podcast <laughs> my husband and I, Ryan, Ryan and Ryan we do our podcast every week on Fridays um uh, through the Epicurean Vagabonds on Substack and um every week we're talking about what we Read, reading recommendations, listening recommendations, um, art recommendations, uh, what we're watching, uh, and what we're tasting. You know, so we're we're constantly like that's a revolving door, and it's not always in uh, you know one. It's never in one genre. It's moving all over the place. So 
Oh, yeah. And, and they're very receptive of their fan base. And if you go on Substack, you can uh, communicate directly with them through the comments section. Absolutely. And they always take recommendations from their listeners, which I think. Constantly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the, you know, that's the part where it's just like, you know, I think that was the thing about. Roz and I became friends by talking about the art that we love, the re the writing we loved, the listening. Uh, we were constantly sharing new things with each other, you know, and 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 that part is the that's the artist's way. That's the artist's way, and then and it it's a. Uh, you know, you don't have to be an artist in order to love, be an appreciate uh, appreciate art. You know, to appreciate those things, you you don't have to create it in order to enjoy it. So that's that's the thing. But thank you, Biggie. <laughs> All right, well, I think uh, I think that's a pretty good way to to close. Yeah, this I think it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great and anybody, of course, who is interested in the book or learning more about Roz or just wants to follow your own work, uh, you can uh, go to Ryan Wildstar on Facebook, uh, yes, his professional please. page, uh, managed by. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I got to catch up on that. I apologize. Um, you the boss. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, damn right. He also ha um, we also have a link to his um to his website as well, where he does sell like uh, some of his art prints and, uh, as a matter yeah. of fact, a uh, art prints for the horse's mouth album cover as well. It's out there. You can get it. And yeah, yeah um, definitely, um, you can find the book. And what about the bells? It's on Amazon. Um, and uh, also, yeah, if you're if you're interested in the uh, Substack that my husband Ryan and I do, it's um, it's Epicurean Vagabonds at Substack.com. So um, you can check that out. And um, yeah, oh yeah, it's, and I will add. Word. Yeah, I will add if you actually go directly through the publisher Iconuts, they will actually send you an exclusive Roz Williams tarot card. No, you got the tarot card. I'm so jealous. I got two tarot cards. Well, I got nothing. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. But yeah, it's uh it's the That's poet so cool. and it has uh on the back it says we're on this floor we dream and in these dreams we drown. That's so cool. I didn't they it's, didn't even it's phenomenal. Me, they didn't even tell me they were doing that so i'm that is so cool so when you <laughs> order that so that's only when you order it from them as far as i'm aware yes okay so yeah go and order it from eigenuts um uh in germany if you can and um amazon has got lots of money they don't need your help yeah they don't <laughs> it's cheaper to go through the publisher anyway absolutely um and it's so, books sold out about six times on Amazon. So every yeah. time I go on, I'm like, yeah, sorry, we don't have any books left. Sorry, guys. <laughs> well, um, thank you. Thank you so much, Zach, for making this happen. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you for agreeing to do it. <laughs> and thank you for everybody uh, for joining and, and your questions. And I hope you got something out of it. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do this uh, again at some point in the future. All right. Well, um, it's late here. It's the it's the witching hour over here. It's uh, so I'm gonna go lay my head down. And it's beer thirty for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> cheers to that, as we say on the podcast. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much for showing up, everybody. We really appreciate your time. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good night, guys. Good night.